Hello and welcome back to another Lord of the Rings live stream. How is everyone doing? Happy Friday. Oh my goodness, it's happening. I have not played Lord of the Rings in a while. And funny story, I played this scenario, which is, what is the scenario? Dead Man's Dyke. I played this scenario. I had a blast with this scenario. We crushed it. Well, uh, we skated by by the skin of our teeth on this scenario. We beat it. And then I completely forgot to download and post it, and it's gone. So, we're going to get to play this one again, which is actually, I'm happy for it Because I thought that this was a really, really interesting, challenging scenario. And I am pumped to try it again, because I don't get to play a lot of these scenarios multiple times. And so, I'm excited to dive back in, because this one burns my brain. Hey, Beast Snow, how's it going? Lord of the Rings, let's go. Josh, is this the Wolfy one? Wolf's is a hard one. I opened that one last or yesterday because, you know, I'm going through, I open the packs whenever I finish a scenario as like a little reward to myself. Um, yeah. Hence the uh, preamble there to this stream. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, so we'll be playing that one next time. Uh, Drilo, haven't seen a Lord of the Rings game before. I'm excited to see how it is. I only know Marvel Champions LCG. Oh my goodness. Let it, let's open up your eyes because this game is sweet. This game is really, really cool. Um, I will, um, talk through the game, kind of talk through the mechanics with this one because it's also a, a fairly challenging scenario. It's a very challenging game as well, but I'll, I'll talk through it and kind of, uh, walk through it a little bit more methodically because I'm trying to do that a little bit more I think that is beneficial both for me as the player when I'm streaming to make sure that I have not missed anything Whatever all of that good stuff But I also think that it helps the viewers who are one not as familiar with the game or can't see the cards or everything like that So I'm, I'm trying to work on and not just Lord of the Rings But all of the games trying to walk through a little bit more methodically call them out um, a little bit better. So, uh, let me know if I'm not doing that well enough. Uh, D sauce, best Lord of the Rings content around by a mile. Keep Oh, thank you so much. You're amazing. Thank you. I appreciate that. That means a lot. That means a lot. Because no best artwork out there. Totally agree with that. Totally agree with that. The artwork is incredible. It may be a bit biased towards Lord of the Rings, but the artwork is amazing. The artwork is incredible. The artwork is amazing. Okay. So I want to one second. So I can actually see what's going on I accidentally. I switched out of my window, so I had to switch that back so I could see what was going on. Let's talk about the deck build. And so what I've been doing in recent Lord of the Rings videos is I've been doing the deck build on stream, which I've been very much enjoying. Um, this time, I did that deck build last time, and I really like the deck. I, I think that it is a decent deck to take up against this. And so I reconstructed that deck. We're going to walk through that, kind of what we were doing historically with some of the older scenarios. Um, and I'll talk through it. But, Drilo, in Lord of the Rings, instead of picking one hero that comes with a pre-con of like 15 cards like Marvel Champions, you pick three heroes. And there are four spheres, just like in Marvel Champions, there are four aspects. And each one of the heroes belongs to a certain sphere. Now, instead of like Marvel Champions, where your cards are going to be used as resource, your heroes are going to accrue resources throughout the game. And then you can use those resources to pay for that hero's sphere's card. So let's give an example. This is Frodo Baggins. Frodo Baggins is a spirit sphere he's a blue character so any resources on frodo can be used to pay for blue cards normally you collect one resource per round so there are ways to get around that and this deck does that and i think in order to get around or to get you know some uh acceleration in the game you need to do that <laughs> and so but let's look at the anatomy of the card real quick up in the top left corner that's seven that is his threat cost now in lord of the rings there's not like a main scheme or something like that but one of the loss conditions is if your threat reaches 50. and so you're going to have a starting threat cost which is the sum total of your heroes your three heroes starting threat typically the lower the threat the weaker the hero is in their stats or their abilities and the higher the threat the better they are or the the more 
kind of popular. I, I, not popular, but the more influential that they are in, to the game. The top is willpower. That's how you're going to be progressing through the game. And so you are going to be trying to progress on like this main, uh, this main quest deck or scheme deck. And you're adding. And once you typically, once you reach the, the threshold, so like this one, once you reach 11, you, you win the game or you, you progress, you have an attack defense and then life value and then an ability. So Frodo says that after Frodo Baggins is damaged, cancel the damage and instead raise your threat by the amount of damage you would have been dealt limit once per phase. This is going to be nice because we don't have a ton of good defenders in here. Now Frodo is going to get some attachments. Um, what do I want to go with first? Okay, let's go with this. This is one of the most bonkers cards in the game. It's Steward of Gondor. This comes in the core set. It says that you can attach it to a hero. Now it is unique. You can only have one of them in your in play at a time. I am running two of these because one of the other differences between this and Marvel Champions is in this game you draw one card a turn. You do not teach, you do not draw up to your hand size or anything like that. You draw one card a turn. Steward of Gondor, two cost. You attach Steward is broken. I love it. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. You can exhaust Steward of Gondor to add two resources to the attached hero's resource pool. Now, this is incredible, but also I typically overlook this little note here that says the attached hero gains the Gondor trait. So we're going to be putting Steward on Gondor on Frodo Baggins. He's going to get that Gondor trait as well as get more resources. So usually you're getting one resource per hero. Now he's going to be getting three resources per hero. It's a, it's a dumb card. It's a really good card. But with the Gondor trait, we're also going to give him the uh, what we like to call on the channel the Gondolorian shield. Um, we can attach to a hero. Limit one per hero. Attached hero gets plus one defense or plus two if they have the Gondor trait. Now, if Frodo has the Gondor trait, look at that. Hey, Vulture, how's it going? How you doing? Um, he gets plus two defense. So now he's at four defense. Frodo's going to be a lot of our defenders. We got an unexpected courage to throw on Frodo Baggins. Unexpected courage we can exhaust to ready. So whenever you quest, attack, defend, you have to exhaust Frodo. Unexpected Courage says that you can exhaust Unexpected Courage to ready the attached hero. And so now we're going to be standing up with Frodo. So now we can utilize his fairly decent two willpower stat line. A quest with him, stand up, defend and attack. And then also we've got Blood of Numenor. So we attach to a Gondor or Dunedain hero. Hey, check it out. He's Gondor now. So we can attach it to Frodo. Spend one resource from the attached hero's resource pool to give him plus one for each resource in his resource pool until the end of the phase. And so this is going to prevent some of those nasty, nasty attacks coming in at Frodo, especially if our threat starts to reach a, a higher ceiling. So that's those are the attachments for Frodo. We will uh, we'll see how it goes. Usually... Uh, well, okay, yeah. I think usually. I think usually. I think that's a fair statement. I like to run, when I'm running true solo, three different spheres of influence because each sphere has their own thing that they're good at in the game. So spirit is really good at lowering your threat as well as questing. Lore is really good at card draw and healing. Leadership is kind of all about big money and allies, which is the purple sphere. Lore is the green sphere. Red is the tactic sphere, and that is all about battle. So... I usually like to run three. I'm actually not doing that this time. I have um, another another spirit sphere. We have Glorfindel, who is another incredibly powerful hero. Um, probably one of the more powerful heroes, heroes. And this is a really, really difficult quest. And so I am running some of the higher, higher class heroes in the game. Beast No, man, if I could go back, I'd put everything in Dragon Slayer Creeler Man. It's so clean. <laughs> you can buy in bulk. Oh my goodness. Everything I buy is out of dragons. Yeah. Dragons. I love the mat dragon shield. They're, it just, it works for every single game. Hey, Joshy. Ah, bedtime. Hello, Nelson. <laughs> hey, how's it going? Glorifindel is a f more power. <laughs> exactly. Glorifindel is a five thread hero. And so let's go ahead and adjust our thread here. So we're going to be up to, uh, uh, oh, that's quest points. That's not the right button. We're going to be up to 12 threat. Remember, when we hit 50, we lose. But 5 threat, 3 willpower, 3 attack, 1 defense, 5 health, 
after Glorfindel exhausts to commit to a quest, raise your threat by one. Now, that seems pretty bad until you see the Light of Valinor card. We attach to a Noldor or Sylvan hero. Glorfindel is one of our Noldor friends. The attached hero does not exhaust to commit to a quest. Dumb. It's so dumb. It's so now we have Light of Valinor. Glorfindel just adds three quest power to the current quest. And he's not exhausted, which means that he can utilize his three attack, which is very, very good. Then, the last one we have is his trusty steed, as Falith. Uh, attached to a Noldor or Sylvan hero, we can exhaust as Falith to place one progress token on any location or two tokens if the attached hero is Glorfindel. Hey, Glorfindel. We're going to start clearing some of these locations. Locations are similar to side schemes in Marvel Champions. They're things that you have to take care of. Drello, I'm also using Mad Sleeve, only they are from Game Genic. Game Genic uh, sleeves are really solid. I like Matt more than normal ones. Totally agree with you there. I, I'm a big fan of the Matt. Um, especially because like they I think they just help with shuffling so much. Alrighty. Our last hero is a special hero. It is Mr. Gandalf. Spirit Glorfindel is when the devs realize people played this game solo. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Joshi doing well, played some Marvel Champions tonight. Hulk Shield deck, of course, smashed his way through four of the Rise of Red Skull campaigns. Zola was a bit stressful, but got there in the end. Zola is mean. I played Zola the other day, and Zola is just... He's rude. <laughs> Gandalf. So we have a current threat of 12 with Frodo and Glorfindel. Gandalf is going to add 14 to that because that's, uh, that's what Gandalf do. He's very influential. So that's going to be, what did I say, 21, 26? Gandalf, incredibly powerful hero. He's actually one of the newer heroes that I got in the progression play. He's a 14, 3, 3, 3, 5. He is a basic, basic hero, meaning that he cannot pay for any cards other than basic, but he does have a really cool ability. It says play with the top card of your deck face up. Once per phase, you can play the top card of your deck as if it was in your hand. When playing a card this way, he's considered to have all of the different sphere of influence icons. So, now he can basically play as Falith. And that's how we're going to get as Falith into play. Because we don't have any green heroes. So, we actually can't use any of the resources on the table for as Falith. Unless he's on the top of our deck. In which case, we can play him. Now, we have a lot of manipulation with the top card of our deck with the Wizard's Pipe. Attach Wizard's Pipe uh, to a Astari character that's going to be Gandalf. And then we can exhaust Wizard's Pipe to swap a um, card in your hand with the top card of your deck. So you're going to be able to switch that out. We've got Gandalf Staff, which exhausts Gandalf Staff to choose one. We can either choose a player to draw a card, add a resource to a resource pool, or discard a shadow card from a non-unique enemy in play. Now, I think every single one of these options is going to be... A valid choice throughout this game and then we've also got another unexpected courage he's got a 3-3-3 we got to utilize it somehow right vulture you got champions two days ago and you're already trying to convince your dad to let me get the rise of red skull expansions and two hero expansions nice yeah no the rise of red skull i think is just is a fantastic big box expansion it gives so much value to the game yeah and oh yeah what uh what two heroes are you looking at good good question josh Let's take a look at our ally lineup. Now we got three Snowborn Scouts. These are going to help when they come into play. We can place progress on a location. Gandalf's going to be sneaking those into play. We got Arwen. We got Hemsworth, which is going to allow us to take a look at that top card of the encounter deck so we can kind of figure out what we're doing because we are, we're going to be wanting to hang out on stage one. We're going to want to blitz through stage two, but stage one is going to be... Uh, we're going to want to hang out there for a while. Phoenix and Doctor Strange. Nice. Nice. Those are those are both awesome. We got Northern Tracker. Four cost um, spirit ally. When he commits to or when the Northern Tracker commits to a quest, place a progress token on every single location in the staging area. Stupid. Stupid. We got Stargazer. Stargazer is going to be very, very critical to this deck because this entire scenario is about milling cards. And so we want to make sure that we have the right cards at the right time. With Stargazer, we can rearrange the top five cards of our deck. Stargazer is going to help us make sure that we can play the, the cards that we need and then toss the cards that we don't. 
We got two, three copies of Galadriel's Handmaiden because Galadriel's Handmaiden is very, very good. Uh, two cost, two threat, or two cost, two willpower. Um, when she enters play, reduce threat by one. Three copies of Test of Will, three copies of Dwarven Tomb, three copies of Elrond's Council. So uh, Test of Will cancels a treachery card. This is the card that Tony, or not Tony, Caleb said that we would never get in Marvel Champions because it's too good. Um, the Dwarven Tomb allows us to go grab a blue card from our discard pile. Again, that deck is going to mill us very, very hard. And so Dwarven Tomb is going to allow us to fix that. Elrond's Council reduces our threat, increases our willpower. Gladrium's Greeting reduces our threat. Stand and Fight is effectively make the call. And then we've got Will of the West. So if we deck out in this scenario, we lose. We do not want to do that. Losing is typically viewed as bad. Um, <laughs> uh, typically viewed as bad. And so Will of the West allows us to shuffle our, play, our discard pile into our deck and then remove Will of the West from the game because this is going to be milling us so, so much. We're probably going to want to get down to a pretty thin deck Play Will of the West, shuffle that, and then push through to stage two, which is then we'll, when we'll win the game. Also, since this card or this uh, this um, scenario is trying to discard a lot of cards, we're playing Hidden Cash. So after Hidden Cash is discarded from your deck, add two resources to the resource pool of a hero of your choice. Acceleration is good. Economy is strong. We are happy. Hey, Carol Kai, how's it going? How are you doing? In Lord of the Rings, losing is typically viewed as an <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a there's definitely a different vibe on how the the game is gonna be played in <laughs> than like Marvel Champions, because Lord of the Rings is it can be demoralizing at some points. Care rope, care rope, care rope. Ah, uh, happy to have you back. Glad you're doing well, Karokai. Mm, okay, so whew, this this scenario is a brain burner. Nelson, what are your thoughts about Doctor Strange and Champions? He is the easily the best hero in the game. Um, I don't even know if that is. I don't think that he would ever be. Um, I don't. I don't. I don't think that'll ever be rivaled necessarily, um, unless they actually do some errata on Doctor Strange himself. He is a lot of fun. He's a lot of fun. Um, I I don't I don't love him as like my personal like fun play because of how powerful he is. I typically like typically like some of the lower power heroes as some of my favorites. That being said, he can be a blast for a lot of people to play. Um, yeah, he's he's a he's a good hero. He's very very strong. Uh, it's significantly better than you were this last time oh good i'm glad to hear that new job from april has worked wonders for you i'm so happy to hear that that's amazing congrats congrats all right let's read 1a here you've brought the prisoners you've rescued from the weather hills to form for nost the rangers gathered here are shocked to hear what you have discovered from aemon farm before their chieftain can decide what to do an unnatural fog covers the ruins in darkness and the specters of the dead warriors emerge from the mist and attack you. Set up, put, uh, I've never actually learned how to say this. I, I, I roll on this guy over here. He gets plus or his stats are XXX where X is the number of quest cards in play. Side quest, very similar to side schemes in Marvel champions were introduced in this game during this cycle. Set sour dude outside out of play i remember he was pretty nasty um indestructible cannot have attachments after a treachery card from with the sorcery trait is revealed from the encounter deck he heals three damage and makes an immediate attack against the first player i remember yeah after he attacks and destroys a character that character's controller must either discard the top three cards of the decks or return uh thar doer to the staging area player has no cards in the deck it's eliminated from the games the player cannot defeat this stage while he has any hit points remaining so e r e on e e r e on e r e on okay okay can you maybe play some champions later i don't think i'm going to be able to play champions today i will i'm hoping that i can play some tomorrow 
Um, but yeah, today I'm actually, I have people visiting this afternoon. And so I need to make sure that I, uh, do all my chores before they get here. <laughs> um, is that the game mat on your background? It looks amazing. Yes. So this is a custom game mat that I got from Etsy. It's incredible. I love it. Beast Snow is going to be jealous. Uh, add one copy of Fornas Square to the staging area. So these are going to be the locations. Maybe. So Fornas Square. So back off. I called it. <laughs> uh, so this has a one threat for it gets plus one threat for each resource token on it. After the first player discards any number of cards from the top of their deck. Place one resource token on here. <laughs> Shuffle the encounter deck. When revealed, each player must search the encounter deck for a Bayful Shade and put it into play engaged with him. Let's go find a Bayful Shade. Man, this thing starts with some nasty stuff. Bayful Shade. Uh, two, two, one, five. When Bayful Shade attacks, the defending player discards the top card of their deck. The discarded card is an ally. It gets plus two for the attack. <laughs> I like to argue Vulture's point. Something other than champions is a breath of fresh air. <laughs> Played a lot of champions over the last week. It's been uh, it's been crazy. Ah, uh, Gandalf. Yes. Hoping to jump back during in during this long weekend. Not sure if I'll be able to. Uh, that's Destiny. Yeah, nice. Shuffle the encounter deck and reveal one encounter card per player because all of this stuff wasn't bad enough. Force, at the end of the refresh phase, each player discards the top card of his deck. If a player has no cards in his deck, he's eliminated from the game. Um, You do hero setup first here. So actually, technically, all this isn't here. But in this game, you do hero setup first. Yeah, I'm wanting to play your friend groups. Are you talking about Star Wars Destiny? Or are you talking about like the video game Destinies? Because apparently there's a lot of games named Destiny in this world. Destiny 2. Okay, so the video game. Nice. Yeah, De Star Wars Destiny was a TCG that Fantasy Flight put out. And it was an interesting game because every single like character had a dice that they came with so i'm sure it's just a nightmare to produce but video game destiny nice but it was a fun game i never like got into it like too heavily but it was definitely fun okay so can i shuffle this i did nice okay and i think we decided that because gandalf is in play his printed effect always have is always um ongoing and so we play with the top card of this deck face up even during the mulligan process if you could only play one living card game for the rest of your life which one would it be why do you ask me the hard questions vulture oh um for the rest of my life Lord of the Rings is my favorite out of the three. That being said, I think Marvel Champions has the most replayability, so I probably have to go with Champions just because of the modular sets that Champions provides. That being said, there's so much content for Lord of the Rings. Uh, oh, maybe, maybe. I. Uh, that's a tough one. I should play Destiny 2. Too. I, I don't play like any video games. I <laughs> I would love to see a Star Wars LCG as well. That'd be amazing. Mm. Alrighty, so we started with an, a Stargazer. Very, very good start here. Elrond's Council is nice. A Test of Will is great. Snowborn Scout, a Wizard's Pipe, and another Stargazer. Yeah, yeah, that that'll uh, that'll do. That'll do. We're gonna do that. Now we're gonna do all of this. Reveal one encounter card per player. The Haunted Keep. While Haunted Keep is the active location, the first undead enemy revealed each round gains Surge. Alrighty, we do not want that to be the active location. We have four threats starting out. We have a Bayful Shade. Everything, everything is, everything is scary. 
So the start of the round, we go through the upkeep phase. I don't know the names of the phases. I definitely should. But during this phase, every single character gets one resource. And we get to draw a card. So we'll draw Blood of Numenor. And because... Oh, ho, ho, ho. hey there. Hey there, Steward of Gondor. How are you doing? Oh, my goodness. That, uh, well, that seems pretty exciting. Huh. Nice. Now, we need to save that because at the end of the round, we're going to um, discard the top card of our deck. So, we want to save that. I think probably the best way to do that is to go ahead and get the Stargazer onto the table. Now, she costs two. Resource phase. That makes sense. That makes sense. <laughs> Upkeep has to be the end, right? Upkeep is the the last phase. No, that's the refresh phase, right? Josh is like, my work, buddy. He looks at rulebook for five seconds, remembers all the rules. <laughs> um, so if we get the Stargazer onto the table, we can save money for a Wizard's Pipe. We don't actually need Wizard's Pipe right now. Stargazer allows us to set Steward of Gondor as well as set so that we're not going to be discarding a ally here. So I think let's go ahead and do that. We're going to spend Frodo and Glorifindel. Also, if uh, I've already forgotten, I, Aran, we're going to call him I. We're going to call him Mr. I. Mr. I. Mr. I. Um, if he if he dies or leaves play, we lose the game. <laughs> Not bad for... Oh, absolutely not bad for a game you don't play. Anytime I get a new game, I ask if he wants to play so he can teach me. <laughs> Mr. I. Oh, man. Hey, Sorry, How's it going? Welcome. Welcome. Happy Friday. Okay. So, we got Stargazer on the table. Re oh, ready. Ready tokens. That's what I'm missing. So, I, I got these Game Genic, like, boxes. And I've been using these. I got them for, like... Uh, I put all my champion stuff in it. I, I really like these boxes. And like, but they're very modular and you can switch these in and out. And so I, we're going to put damage because I don't expect to ever be taking damage into the littler one. Then we're going to get our ready exhaust tokens. I don't know why I always forget ready exhaust tokens. There we go. Cool. Perfect. So we will exhaust the stargazer when we exhaust the stargazer we get to look at the top five cards of our deck and returns them to the top of our deck in any order so these are the top five cards Ooh. okay so we are going to be discarding two cards before we draw another card one from the bayful shade and then one from the forced effect so we have to choose two of these cards that we do not want and we do not want to discard our wind for the bayful shade because that's bad. There could also be a potential that we discard an extra card. So I think I want to, I think Steward of Gondor right here is probably the most important card to get into play. And so if a treachery card from the, or a card from the top of this deck requires us to discard a card, I don't want it to be Steward of Gondor. And so let's, Let's protect Steward of Gondor because then we can use Wizard's Pipe to, to manipulate the deck. Or actually, Stargazer can manipulate the deck. I think Will of the West, we have another Will of the West. We also have Dwarven Tombs to grab Will of the West. So I think Will of the West is a nice discard for Bayful Shade. Stand and Fight is more of a late game card. Um, so we can use that for this. We will protect it with... Let's protect it with Arwen, Steward, and then Dwarven Tomb. Now, if we don't have to discard, we'll just use the same thing, and we'll use Stargazer to fix it. Alrighty. Okay, so that is the planning phase, right? Right? I think it's planning phase. Let's go. So we are now going into the quest phase. The quest phase, we are going to commit characters to the quest. We're going to flip a card, one card per player, and then compare the total number of willpower to the total number of threats. If it exceeds, we're going to place progress on the main, or if there is an active location, we place progress on the active location first. And if we, 
if we are lower than the total number of threat, we raise our threats by the delta. Very sad. Very, very sad. That being said, I think we're just going to take the undefended attack of the Bayful Shade and assign that to Frodo. Increase our threat. Threat is a resource. We're at 26 right now. We're at 26 right now. Yes, 26 right now. And I think we can... I th Actually, we may just defend with Frodo. We're showing five here. We can quest for... Man, that Bayful Shade sucks. Uh, <laughs> we will definitely quest with Mr. I. So that's going to be one. We are going to definitely quest with uh, Gandalf. That's going to be three. One, two, three, four. Now we're showing four. We're questing for four. But we are going to be flipping another card. I hit the button one too many times. Now, if we quest with Glorfindel, we would have to raise our threat. The other thing that we have is we have this Elrond's Council. And so we can use it to increase one of the willpowers and then lower our threat. Really, I want to make sure that we're not engaging another. Oh, yeah, that'd be bad. So actually, let's save Frodo just in case we do engage another enemy. We don't have to take another attack undefended. That would be that'd be sad. Undefended attacks have to be assigned to your hero, a hero, uh, and damage is uh, damage is a lot scarier because there's very very little healing. There's no healing in this deck actually. Now, do we want to commit Glorifendel? That's the real question. Is if we commit Glorifendel, we raise our threats, but we also add three. If we don't, and we can also throw some damage over here. I think we're not. I think we're gonna we're gonna risk the threat. Yeah, we're gonna risk the threat right now. Requesting for four, showing four. We're gonna flip into a Tharadur's Damned. So he's a three, five, two, six. Oh jeez. After he engages you, discard the top two cards of your deck and assign X damage among characters you control, where X is the combined printed cost of the card. Now we're showing three, four, seven. We quested for four, so we raise our threat by three. One, two, three. Oh, jeez. D20 made me back a game Kickstarter yesterday. Ooh, nice. What'd you get? What'd you get? Now we are in the travel phase. We can choose to travel to one of these locations. After the first player discards any number of cards. Yeah, we're going to travel to the square. Now, any progress is placed on the square before it's placed on the main quest. D20, uh... Cree, man, I've never, I've never seen that. You also backed a new DC game, but that was your own fault. Ooh, I don't know about the DC game either. Huh. We're going to move into the engagement phase. Engage phase? I don't know. Uh, any enemy in the staging area here that has a lower threat than our current threat, so 29, would engage us automatically. We actually get to choose to engage before this happens. So this is a 35. We're not going to engage this guy. Um, and so then we go into the combat phase. Attacks happen first. So he's going to attack. When Bayful Shade attacks, we discard the top card of our deck. It's going to be Will of the West. Um, it is not an ally. So no plus two. I'm going to defend with Frodo. So he's attacking for 2-2. Two, two, no shadow effect. Shadow effects are boost card, effectively. So, nothing happens. We will swing with Glorfindel to deal two damage. So, Glorfindel has a three attack. The Bayful Shade has a one defense. We deal two damage, and he has five health. At the end of the round, at the end of the refresh phase, we discard the top card of our deck. The new expansion for the... Oh, the DC deck building game? Cool. It's a new expansion. Yeah. How are you enjoying the game? Well, I mean, it, you've been playing a lot of it, so I assume. Um, I, do, I don't think... Is it... Is, is there a solo mode? I assume that there is. I just never played it. Okay, so at the... Also, in the refresh phase, our threat goes up by one. Top of the round, we will pass out money. Draw a card. Okay. We're going to use Gandalf's ability to play Steward of Gondor over here on Frodo. 
I'm gonna get some money. Two money, to be precise. Oh, and now, now things just start getting very exciting. Go ahead and play Blood of Numenor on Frodo. So we can spend a resource and he gets plus X defense. Let's go ahead and use the Stargazer to see what we have going on. We got Unexpected Courage, Dwarven Tomb, a Test of Will, the Handmaiden, and another Snowborn Scout. Oh, okay. I think I probably want to get a Test of Will into our hand, which we can with the Wizard's Pipe. And so I think that's going to go on the top of our deck. We want to discard... Yikes. Uh, unexpected Courage? I think I need a Dwarven Tomb at some... Oh, we have a Test of Will. We have a Test of Will. Just kidding. We'll discard a Test of Will. <laughs> um... I think I probably want to play Arwen. I think we probably want to get Arwen into play here. Um, which means that we don't have a ton of money floating. We could play Unexpected Courage as well. Arwen costs two. We have four spirit resources. So we could, but I want to hang on to a resource for a test of will. We have Elrond's Council, which is a little help. This is scary. This is six. I don't love that. I really want a Northern Tracker. That'd be great. We also have two Snowborn Scouts that we can... Hmm. Gross. Very much dislike. But we're going to need some questing. We're going to need some questing. Let's go ahead and... Let's grab, actually, the Handmaiden. We'll swap the Handmaiden with a... No, we don't want to. We don't want to swap the Stargazer. We can stop. We can swap the Stargazer actually after we after we attack here. So, what card do we want to discard? We can. I want unexpected courage. We can discard a test of will. I think we'll discard a test of will because we already have Steward into play. I think Dwarven Tomb is going to provide flexibility that we want. So we got a Test of Will, which will be discarded from the Bayful Shade. Handmaiden, we will swap and discard the Stargazer. Then we will draw into Dwarven Tomb. Snowborn Scout would then be on the top of our deck, which we could play with Gandalf if we wanted to. Um, and then Unexpected Courage, we could swap. Okay. This quest hurts my brain so much. I'm loving it. The art is so good, especially on the super villains. They're unofficial solo mode. You can play with any of the box. Oh, cool. Okay. They've also released four crisis boxes, which can be paired with the core or any expansions. And it's a solo cop. Oh, got it. Okay. That's cool. That's cool. The new expansion for Justice League Dark. They're offering a ton of other add-on Kickstarter exclusive. Oh, that's nice. That's really fun. I love Kickstarter exclusives. Actually, I don't, but I am a sucker for them. But I, I don't actually love Kickstarter exclusives. <laughs> Also, I would love Gandalf's staff. Okay, let's go ahead and spend two resources from Mr. Frodo Baggins pool to play Arwen. Actually, let's spend Glorfindel's resource. The only reason that that matters is Blood of Numenor. I'm sure there's other reasons that that matters, but yeah. I'm also a sucker for them. My wallet is on life. So <laughs> Nice. Um, uh, we're going to spend one from Frodo's to play Wizard's Pipe. Did not really consider that, but here we go. Wizard's Pipe, we can swap uh, a card from our hand with the top card of our deck. And then we are going to... We're going to we're going to quest. We're going to quest pretty hard. Guys. Oh, jeez. I hate this. I hate it. I hate it so much. We're going to quest for two. One, two. We're going to give Frodo the plus two, or the plus one defense. We're going to quest for one, two, three. We're going to quest for one. You may check out Hall or Nothing. Looks like something you might enjoy. I haven't played it, so I can't say much about it, but the art is nice and the store gameplay looks great. Oh, nice. They make the 
kill fourth games. Oh, okay. Nice. Okay, yeah, I'll check it out. I'll check it out. So, we're showing six in the staging area. What a horrible... A horrible thing. This is awful. I don't like seeing that at all. I don't actually know what our... What our game plan is. I think we leave that for a long time. <laughs> we will play Elrond's Council. We'll reduce our threat by three and increase our quest points by one. That puts us at seven. Do we go with Glorifendel or actually Glorifendel? Glorifendel and Frodo could take out the Bayful Shade, which I think we probably need to do. We need to prioritize killing the Bayful Shade. So maybe we just take this attack undefended. We raise our threat, Glorifendel, and we can take out the Bayful Shade. Okay. Ugh. And it's a two. Nullberry tomb. Tombs. While it's the active location, it gains response. When it is explored, each player shuffles the top five cards of his discard pile into the deck. We can return the topmost enemy in the encounter deck discard pile to the staging area to travel there. I need a northern tracker. I need a northern tracker. We're showing eight, so we increase our threat by one. We will not optionally engage this guy. He's going to attack. We'll take it undefended. It's going to be two plus zero. Raise our threat by one, two. Because we're going to use Frodo's... Actually, you know what? We're just... We're not. We're going to throw the two damage on Glorifendel. Yeah. That makes way more sense. We'll swing back for four. Which will kill the Bayful Shade. Boom. Nice. Increase our threat. Unexhaust everyone. Discard some... Oh, wait. Test of Will got discarded from there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Test of Will got discarded from the Bayful Shade. We're going to use Wizard's Pipe to swap Stargazer with the Handmaiden. And then Stargazer gets discarded at the end of the refresh phase. We talked about that. I remember. Alrighty. Whew. Okay. Draw a card. Increase threat. Pass out money. Wish we had a staff. That's the order of things that we're doing. Actually, we really need Northern Tracker. Because we're, we're, we're going to lose if we don't do something about that. Um, uh, we, we're going to have Stargazer. So we got Snowborn Scout. Unexpected Courage. As Falith is actually huge here. But we cannot play as Falith. Dang it. Hidden Cash, that's going to help accelerate some stuff. And a Northern Tracker, let's go. Let's go. Okay. Things are looking good, friends. Okay. Northern Tracker is going on the top of the deck because we can swap into it. As Falith is going to go on the... I think we protect as Falith. We're going to go hidden cash needs to be discarded. Uh, it's so good. It's so good. Okay. So I think if hidden cash is the second card. It will be not necessarily discarded because we're actually only discarding one. Now, could we actually engage this guy? Discard the top two cards of your deck and assign X damage where X is the combined printed cost of the cards. So if we go Hidden Cash and Snowborn, we could take one damage. And then that can get us to as Faleth easier. Hey, gross. But then we have to deal with that guy. How do we deal with him? I don't actually know how we deal with him. Because he is a survivability of eight, which is everyone on the table attacking. I guess a Northern Tracker could help take him out. Northern Tracker has two. <laughs> ah, so scary. If we can get the Northern Tracker on the table and as Falith here soon, we can get over the hump and we're going to be a little bit better. I think we have to engage him. I 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go Hidden Cache, Snowborn Scout, as Falith, Unexpected Courage. We're going to swap Snowborn here. And so if we discard a card, that's fine. And then from the encounter card, and then we can engage here and grab the Hidden Cache. Then I... Ooh. Do we take a massive threat hit? I think ooh, we probably do. We probably do. All right, let's use Wizard's Pipe to swap Northern Tracker with Snowborn Scout. We'll use three and one from Glorfindel to play Snow or Northern Tracker. We have a test of will. We have five, eight. So this right here, we may we may throw Arwen under the bus here because he's attacking for so much. Or we could defend with Frodo. I don't love it. We're gonna our threat is gonna be way too high. I think we're not gonna defend with or we're not gonna quest with Arwen. We're gonna take a massive threat hit and just hope we can fix it. Um, <laughs> uh, and then we have Arwen as a chump blocker if we need her. I guess we'll we'll commit Mr. I. So that's one. We're showing eight. Flip into the broken battlements. Time three forced. After the last time counter is removed from broken battlements, each player discards the top five cards of a deck and places one time counter here. Oh, gross. That's time three. So we're showing 10. We raise our threat by nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Whew. Okay. We'll engage here. Oh, gross. Me every time I flip in. <laughs> That's fair. There, there are really no good encounter cards in this game. I'm gonna I think I'm gonna throw Arwen under the bus here. We have five attacking me gets plus one. That's gonna be Arwen. But like with threat at 39 and no Galadrium greetings in sight, I think I would rather have Arwen out. Especially because we know as Faleth is coming and we're gonna start clearing. Bye bye Arwen. <laughs> <Ew, it's> <laughs> <laughs> that's really funny <laughs> okay let's swing with three six eight to clear this guy Oof. okay oh we discard the top two cards of our deck when he engages us play the game nelson we're gonna give that money to gandalf we're gonna discard snowborn scout I don't know what I was thinking. Oops. I thought as I thought I was going to draw a card and not as foul. Here we are. And we got one damage that we have to assign. We'll throw that on there. Okay, we're at 40 savage. <laughs> draw into as foul if. Okay. Pass out some money. Take time. There's a lot of upkeep in this in this scenario. There's a lot of stuff going on everywhere. Okay. Oh, we have the Gladrill's handmaid, and we can reduce our threat by one. Nice. Let's use Stargazer. Got unexpected courage. Stand and fight. We can get our one back. Northern Tracker. Ooh. And Elrond's Council is good too. Oh, another Elrond's Council. How? Oh, actually, we're going to absolutely spam some Elrond's Councils because this is Gandalf's ability is once per phase. Your team Aowen, though, so you're <laughs> nice. 
Have we already tossed an unexpected courage? No, I just keep bearing the unexpected courage. <laughs> I think I think I'm okay tossing the stand and fight. But I think what we want to do here. Okay. Elrond's council is going on the top of the deck. Hope you can cook. <laughs> uh, Lord of the Rings is so good. So Elrond's going on the top. We can swap that with Asphalith. Asphalith we can play with Gandalf. Then during the quest phase we can play the second copy of Elrond's council, which is going to reduce our threat significantly. And so I think we stack these. I think we, I think we, dare I say, bury unexpected courage and pick the next one up. We also have dwarven tombs. We're gonna we're gonna bury the unexpected courage. Um, draw into northern tracker, and then we could actually play stand and fight with Gandalf's ability. I didn't. I don't think I ever actually thought about that because it's an action. Gandalf loves his action cards. Let's let's do that. Okay. We'll use Wizard's Pipe to swap Elrond's Council with Asphalith. We will use two to play Asphalith onto Glorfindel. Glorfindel will exhaust Asphalith to place two progress here on the, uh, the Haunted Keep. Whew. We have two to play the Handmaiden. After she enters play, reduce every player's threat by one. Hey, Static, how's it going? Ah, uh, yo, this, I love this scenario. <laughs> this scenario is so fire. It itches just the right part of my brain. Because there's so many, like, fun, yeah. Okay, so we can clear with Northern Tracker here. So I think, actually, our, 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 Location problem is going to be fine. We're reducing our threat by six. We have a Dwarven Tomb, which I want to save for Glad Dreams if we can. Um, what scenario is this? This is the Dead Man's Dyke scenario. This is the third scenario in the Agmar Awakens cycle. And so it's the, it's the third scenario in the big box, the last scenario in the big box, or if you're in the new repackage content. The third scenario in the the scenario box. Whew. It's so good. Okay. Um I have a Dwarven tomb. You know what? Actually, stand and fight. Stand and fight to get Arwen back is not a bad call at all. We're gonna we're gonna switch stand and fight and northern tracker and be happy with that. Okay. Okay, yeah. Quest phase. We're going to play Elrond's Council. We're gonna give that additional questing to the Northern Tracker. Reduce our threat by three. One, two, three. We're gonna use Gandalf's ability to play another copy of this. One, two, three. Northern Tracker is now questing for three. We could dorm into him and do it again, but no, we're not. Um, Northern Tracker is going to be three. We're going to place a progress on each one of these locations in the staging area. Just going to clear this. Well, the active location. Nope. Now we're only showing four. We're questing for three. Let's go two. One, two. Let's go one. That's six. I'm okay with that. I'm okay with the six showing four. Yeah. I'm going to flip into Doomed 2. We raise our threat by two. Each player discards each ally he controls that has the same card, same title as an ally in their discard pile. That would be Stargazer, which would be very bad. 
That would be not the Handmaiden. It would only be Stargazer, which we honestly could play again. Like, we, we don't get our win back with the stand and fight, but we could get the... We're going to draw into stand and fight. What was I thinking? Oh, well. Um... Okay, discarding Stargazer would be bad. But we can easily get Stargazer back with Stand and Fight. And that's the only one we would discard. Uh, I'm saving my Unexpected Courage. Okay. We place two progress here. Hey, look. We're, we're, we're doing stuff. We're doing progress stuff. We're getting there. Alrighty. At the end of the... We're going to discard the Unexpected Courage. We'll draw in to stand and fight. Northern Tracker's on the top of our deck. Increase our threat up to 36. Pass out the money. Oh, yeah. Also time. For some reason, I thought we were going to be able to clear that. Um, <laughs> we, we're not even going to get close to clearing that in time. We'll clear it in a couple of turns, right? Because we have two S Phallus and then a Northern Tracker can clear it. Gross. So we will discard the top five cards of our deck. We have a Dwarven Tomb. We're going to save the Dwarven Tomb just in case we hit a Wild, or a Will of the West because we've already passed on one of those, which I think was dangerous, but here we are. Okay, let's use two for Stand and Fight. Let's go get Stargazer back because she seems really important. Let's go Stargazer to take a look at Northern Tracker. Of course, Stargazer. There's a Galadrium's greeting. That's uh, that's nice. Handmaiden. And another Galadrium's greeting. Ooh. Alrighty. So I definitely want to play Northern Tracker here. Um, do we have anything in our? We're getting to where I don't really want to Wizard's Pipe too much, because I want both. I need both of these cards actually. So we actually just may put the Northern Tracker on top. We'll discard the Handmaiden and then get ourselves. We'll discard the Stargazer, draw into Handmaiden, and then we have Gladrium's Greeting. But we may just use Gandalf's ability to play the Tracker. Okay. Because I, I don't want to toss these cards. Especially because we're about to discard five cards. Oh, we're going to discard all the Hand. Oh, we're going to discard all the Gladrium's. No. Oh, jeez. Um. So we could actually play all the Gladrium's Greetings. So if we do this, we can actually play the Gladrium Greetings. So we have a we need money for Glorfindel. So we have two, four, six, nine. So we're actually one short from playing all of the Glad or Northern Tracker and the Gladrium Greetings. We want it. We definitely need to. Get Northern Tracker on the table. Uh, I want my staff. I want my staff. But we would discard. We would discard the Gladium greeting. We lose the handmaid and the Stargazer. That's fine. Okay. Is it worth it? Is it? Well, I guess there, there's nothing that we can do about it. So, yeah, let's go ahead and spin one, 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 one to play Northern Tracker. Okay. We will as Falith two here. Okay. 
we will go into the quest phase. We'll spend one, three to play Gladium's Greeting. So this will be uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, down to 30. Happy about that. Let's go ahead and quest for two. And we'll place progress on both of these. This is brutal. That's brutal. We're showing four. We'll quest for two here. We'll quest for one over here with Mr. I. So that's going to be, we're showing what? Five? One, two, three, four, five. Five showing four. We're about to lose a Gladium's greeting. Good. Okay, I guess rules question for for the experts out there. When I'm using Gandalf's ability, do I have to use a resource from Gandalf's pool to play the card? I think I still want to do what I did. I'm just kind of curious. Because it says, once per phase, you may play the top card of your deck as if it was in your hand. When playing the card... No, I don't think you do. I don't think you do. I think you can just always play this card. And even you don't even have to use Gandalf's money to do it. That's awesome. That's really cool. That's a lot of flexibility. Thank you. Thanks, Josh. Rev 5... Okay, let's uh let's go for it. Uh broken battlements. Ah, it's back. So time three. Another dice. Okay, gross. It's more than that, it's his resources are tip it's more than that, all his resources are typically Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I I was just thinking that like I have cards in this deck that Frodo and Glorfindel cannot pay for. And so, and the acceleration is on Frodo's resources, not Gandalf's. And so I was like, do I want to preserve his resources so that I can maybe hit, well, I guess it's just Snowborn Scout. Oh, uh, no, the Gondorian Shield are also in here. I'm like, whatever. Okay. Okay, I quested for five. We have two, four, six. We raise our threat by one. Okay. The end of... We're going to... It still has to be a resource. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, time is going to tick. We're going to do one, two, three, four, five. That was not too bad. And then the last discard is a hidden cash. Woohoo! Nice. <laughs> That's so satisfying. I feel like I'm playing Domino. <laughs> um... So when hidden cash is discarded from your deck, add two resources to the resource of a hero you control. Oh, it's another hidden cash coming up. Interesting. Um, honestly, we'll give them to Gandalf. And then this comes in with one time counter. This ticks down to two. Which that will clear. We can clear that before that pops. So... I also think the timing works out that I can do Esfala twice in a round before the time counter is removed, right? Top of the round, place here. Time counter is removed at the end of the refresh phase. But after we have readied, so I can place Esfala, I can ready Esfala in the resource phase. Is there an action phase between readying and time that I can activate Esfala again? That's a, I guess that is a question. Stand up, increase our threat. We'll draw into the hidden cash. We've got Dwarven Tomb on the top of our deck. Alrighty. Yep. Sick. That's exciting. Alrighty, my friends. We are we're feeling actually fairly decent here. Um 
we're about to well we're not going to clear that but that's fine we're going to clear here we're going to clear their next turn that will clear next turn we have been really fortunate to not see too many enemies that i mean location lock is a real thing but able to drop two northern trackers on the table was was huge for us um speaking of huge for us let's talk about stargazer I, that didn't make any sense at all we got dwarven tomb another steward of gondor unexpected courage wizard's pipe give me a staff there he is let's go sick all righty oh wait actually we need money the game is harder if you do not give your heroes the the money okay so we can we can toss the the steward of gondor we don't need steward of gondor we don't need wizard's pipe those are both already here i think we want to Honestly, what we're going to do here is we're going to we're going to play Gandalf staff from the top of the deck. We're going to swap hidden cash with Dwarven Tomb. I think we're going to go ahead and just Dwarven Tomb. We have we have some time. Our deck is fairly decent, but remember if we deck out we lose in this scenario, so I think at some point I need to just bite the bullet Dwarven Tomb that Will of the West. Because if it's on the bottom of the deck, we lose the game. The second copy of Will of the West. So I think we're going to bite the bullet, grab Dwarven Tomb, put Hidden Cash, and then we can just discard all of these cards. And hopefully we can find something that discards stuff. Okay. Yeah. So we will go ahead and spend two resources to play Gandalf Staff. Absurdly good card. We're going to swap Wizard's Pipe. Dwarven Tomb for Hidden Cash. We've got... As Falith, we'll place two here. We're going to save Gandalf Staff just if there is a Shadow card. We can, we can deal with that. Okay, so what we're looking for, what we still need, our, our building blocks before we push really, really hard is, one, just more allies. We're going to need a lot of damage. Unexpected Courage, I think on Gandalf at this point, that first Unexpected Courage that's coming up, I think we'll throw that on Gandalf. Um, We need Light of Valinor. And then we can, because those are all here, right? So we can... Yeah, we, we, we can figure that out. We, we can we can hit Will of the West in a bit. And then once we hit Will of the West, it's... Will of the West is a good card. Will of the West is a really good card. And I thought when I opened the core box, I was like, why would I ever want Will of the West? And the reason being, it's a very decent card. That's why you want Will of the West. <laughs> Especially for things like this where it's mulling. But it's also just another option for you to play the same card multiple times. Okay. Northern Tracker. Northern Tracker. That will clear here. Place two there. Place two here. I wish it was Grace. And, oh, it's... Yeah. Yeah. Blue gets all the good cards. <laughs> I don't think it should have been limited to Spirit. Yeah. It doesn't feel like it feels more like a lore card, honestly. Like, if I had to pick a sphere of influence to throw it in, I would throw it in green. But I don't know. Spirit Spirit just seems so good. And Spirit seems like the best sphere in my my opinion. I'm curious, I'm curious, Josh. What are people who have played the game? Um what do you think is yeah, plus green draws all the cards, right? Exactly. Um, what do you think is, like, during this cycle, what do you think is the best fear of the, in the game? And then is that different at the end of the game? Like, at with all the entire card pool, what do you think is the best fear? I'm curious. Okay, so we got two. We've got four. Spirit for both. We got five. 
I'm just gonna pull him over here. Five showing four. Spirit from start to finish. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Spirit's so good. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um honestly, I think I think we're gonna go just with the five. I'd rather take the threat hit right now than and have an enemy come out and have six th swinging back at it and a defender. So let's go five. We're going to flip into, ooh, win revealed. Each player uh, discards the top three cards of his deck until the end of the round. Add two to the total threat in the staging area for each different card type discarded this way. That helps, honestly, a lot. So it would be plus four. But we would get rid of all the cards that we don't need. And plus two resources. Plus four. So we... I throw, yeah, we're going to do that. Hidden cash triggers. We're going to throw two money at Gandalf. Um, we're going to go two, four, six, eight. So we increase our threat by three. One, two, three. The other thing that... I have learned throughout the game and playing the game more is if you're running blue, you have so much manipulation over your threat that like raising your threat is not a bad, especially if you have tech against enemies. Like I, at the beginning of the game, I was like, I cannot raise my threat. I can't do it, but it's like, Oh, I'll hit 40 and we'll just drop that right back down. It's going to be fine. Leadership and tactics stay mid throughout, and lore is the most improved. Yeah, I think lore, especially, I've already seen that from like where I'm at in the game. Lore was, I think, no, tactics I think was the worst in the core. But lore, lore is, lore is enticing. Okay, let's stand up. Actually, let's increase our threat. Gandalf staff will give... A resource to Frodo. Well, discard unexpected courage. That's actually sad. Whatever. I don't actually remember if I increased my threat. I don't think I did. So, pop that up. We've got all that. We're going to... Draw into a Galadrian's greeting. That's very nice. And Light of Valinor. Hey, how you doing? Nice. Okay. Top of the round, we're going to pass out some money. This ticks down to one. Let's go Stargazer. We got Valinor. Hemsworth. Gondorian shield. There's another staff. Don't need that. Test of will. Alrighty. So we don't need the staff. I think I want to get. I think I want to get Hemsworth out there. Is there an event? We can we can toss Galadriums on the top of the deck. Play that, and then if we go, if we swap. Light of Valinor with Gladium's Greeting. We can then play Gladium's Greeting, which means that Gandalf staff is going to be discarded. Test of Will gets drawn. Gondorian Shield gets um, on the top of the deck that we can then play for Frodo. We're getting built. Also, we're getting pretty thin. So Will of the West is in these bottom cards, which gets very, very dangerous very quickly. Cool. I guess if it's on the bottom of the deck, we would always be able to... <laughs> Get it not on the bottom of the deck with Stargazer. Lore is your favorite. It's fun. It's got a lot of like fun sequencing to it. Like with the card draw and just like cards in a card game is good. Alrighty. We'll spend one here. Play Hemsworth. We can exhaust Hemsworth to look at the top card of the encounter deck. Oh, it's a cursed dead. When reveal, put each copy of Turkurse dead. Um, in the discard pile, into play in the staging area. Is that zero? No, there's one. I don't like it. I don't love it. They, Gandalf and Glorfindel can kill them. They only attack for, they attack for three? 
What a brutal. How brutal. That's gross. I don't like that. Um, we will Wizard's Pipe to swap Light of Eleanor with Galadrium's Greeting. As fellas should not be exhausted. Um, there's a lore hero in this cycle. Oh, ooh, ooh, don't tempt me, Frodo. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. I love getting to like the packs and being able to open the packs again because it just brings me so much joy. I just love seeing the new cards. It's so fun. Okay, so I think what we're gonna do because we have this guy here, and I think I want to save my test of wills. We're going to block with the Northern Tracker. And so we will, as Falith here, clear this. We will commit Northern Track. Oh, wait, actually, first, spend one to play Light of Valinor. Then we will go into quest phase, commit Northern Tracker, which will clear this. Do a 10 hour stream and open everything. <laughs> No, no, I, I like, I like the patience. It's fun. <laughs> We're having fun. <laughs> uh, so this is going to come in, put it into the staging area. So that's going to be four. All right, we're going to have two, four clears this. Oh, this also has like a million. It has a it has roughly a million threat. It does not matter. But it has roughly a million. So we're questing for one. Glorfindel will quest for three, which will be enough to clear and not place any progress, which I'm okay not placing progress at this point. So boom, when revealed, we're gonna go grab another one. This is a really cool card, I think. I think that this is a fun. A million. You need a few more tokens then. <laughs> stream doesn't end until all the stream crap is in the garbage. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have so many cards in shrink because I have all the nightmare stuff. I have the entire, all the cycles. I have Arkham stuff. I have so many cards in shrink. I have Lurkana packs that I haven't opened. Okay, so that was four. We clear this. These both will engage. They're all shadow cards. We will Gandalf staff this shadow card. We will defend the Northern Tracker here. We will defend Frodo here. Discard an attachment you control. Honestly, Light of Alinar. <laughs> because we know we have another one coming. Pretty soon. <laughs> so we might we might as well just toss Light of Alinar. Oh, also we're going to play Gladrium's Greeting. We're going to keep a resource. We're going to spend... We're going to... We had four, right? We're going to spend one and then two from there to play Gladiator's Greeting. Laura, throw by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Friday's a great day to open all of that. I'll announce it. <laughs> oh, geez. Oh, geez. Okay. Um, We defended. We take a damage. We'll take the damage. I'm okay with that. Instead of the threat. Then, boom, boom. Let's take these guys off. Okay. Alrighty. Here we are. We are feeling pretty good. We're going to raise our threats. We're going to discard this card. We're going to stand up. I guess I could have played a test of will, knowing that we had another one coming. Yeah, I probably should have played a test of will. It's fine. Whatever. Actually, I better make sure I'm there to organize it because otherwise... <laughs> oh, you would not like... You would not like the state of this table over here. It's it's uh it's not good. It's not good. But I have like 
Yeah, it's not good. It's not good. We're going to draw into a test of will. We have the Gondorian shield. Let's go ahead and... Pass out money. That is an important part of the game to remember. We'll have Stargazer. Let's let's see. We got the shield. Got the handmaiden. Northern Tracker. Stand and fight. Where's Will of the West and Blood of Numenor? Wow. I'm starting to get a little concerned about this whole <laughs> Will of the West. It's uh it's it's buried. Okay, so I think we want to play the Gondorian Shield. Um, organizing and slaving could make money. I think I'd be rich. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Okay, so we're going to play Gondorian Shield onto Frodo. So that's going to be the top card of our deck. Um, we can... We can swap a Test of Will with Northern Tracker. And then we can play the, third, the next copy of Northern Tracker. Honestly, stand and fight. We'll play Northern Tr Tracker. And it'll be Test of Will. Test of Will will get discarded. We got Stand and Fight. I'm going to turn that upside down so I can remember. I have two Will of the West in the deck, and one of the Will of the West is in the bottom four cards. I think, right? I haven't passed both of them. That'd be hilarious. I have Dwarven Tomb, so I can grab them. But, like... Yeah. <laughs> it was, like, the first card and the last card. <laughs> okay, so we're swapping. So we're playing, swapping, playing. And then Tesla Will probably gets discarded. Actually, I guess we can Hemsworth and see what this is. It's a Bayful Shade. While he attacks, discards the top card of his deck if it's an ally. Okay, so sweet. So we can discard whatever this is. We'll discard Blood of Numenor. And then we'll draw into Stand and Fight and Gladiol's Handmaiden. I'm happy with that. Okay. That, that works out really well. Yeah, heck yeah. Let's go. Okay, we're about to hit Will of the West. Which means that we need to use our dwarven tombs and stuff to get them in the deck or in the discard pile so we can play with them again he's also attacking for two we'll block with frodo let's go ahead and spend here give frodo plus two defense we will wizard's pipe to swap northern tracker with a test of will we will spend two four to play northern tracker And then I think, so he has a survivability of 13. We have 3, 6, 10. We have, we have one lethal attack in the deck, or on, on the table right now. And so now I feel pretty good about that. So we could attack and clear. Or push through really hard. Gandalf Staff, I think we'll just discard the Shadow card. I don't think we need to deal with the Shadow cards right now. Um, we could actually card draw. I forgot about that. I don't think we need to card draw, but it is an option. Sick. Alrighty. And then Gandalf and Glorfindel can swing back and kill here. Also, we don't have the Light of Valinor anymore. Oh, well, that's fine. It's only showing two. Let's go ahead and just quest for two. Three. Four. I think we will go ahead and spend a resource for a Dwarven Tomb and grab... Ladrium's greeting feels like the best call here. We know we have a Light of Valinor coming. Do we have another Unexpected Courage coming? 
All right, we've seen both of our unexpected courage. Oh, we've seen both of our unexpected courages. We may actually grab unexpected courage. Eh. I feel like Gladrium's is better. Yeah, we'll glad Gladrium's, and then we'll play Gladrium's Greeting to reduce our threat by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. This Dwarven Tomb is for Will of the West. Do not let me use this Dwarven Tomb for another thing other than Will of the West unless we can find it. Don't let me do that. Um. Okay, so we're questing for four. Increase this by two. We actually don't have to engage him, which is kind of funny. We'll go ahead and engage him. Um, when he attacks, discard the top card. Not. We will defend with four. No shadow effect. Gandalf and Glorfindel will take out the Faithful Shade. Discard this card. Increase our threat. Stand up. Feeling pretty good right now. Dang it. I assume that was a two. Alrighty. Draw into stand and fight. Pass out money. Oh, actually, Gandalf's staff can pass out a money. Because I forgot to do the shadow card thing. <laughs> nice. Let's find the will of the West. Stargazer. I choose you. There it is. Let's go. It's actually the last... Okay, and Light of Alinar. Nice. Okay, so how can we maximize this? How dangerous do we want to play? Uh, I think I think I have to... Uh, let's do this first. After the Dead Lord engages you, put the topmost undead enemy in the discard pile into play engaged with you. Uh, which is just a Bayful Shade. Okay, I, I can't not take Will of the West. <laughs> so I think we'll go Light of Valinor. We can swap Light of Valinor. Gosh, we're getting dangerous. Um, okay, so if we swap Light of Valinor with, like, whatever, we can then play Light of Valinor. We can play Dwarven Tomb from the top of our deck. Go grab something. Honestly, probably an unexpected courage. We're at 27 threat. I'm pretty happy with the threat. Then we can play Will of the West during a later phase. Yeah, okay. We'll swap we'll swap stand and fight with Light of Valinor using the wizard's pipe. We will. Forgot that that would be on the top of the deck, actually. So we're actually going to do Dwarven Tomb that. We're going to put Dwarven Tomb on the top of the deck. We're going to spend one for Dwarven Tomb to go grab Unexpected Courage. Put that into our hand. Okay, we will spend two to play Unexpected Courage on probably Gandalf, actually. We'll spend one to play Light of Eleanor on Glorfindel. I spend two to play Stand and Fight. Where's Arwen? Man, Arwen has not been on the table for a while. To get Arwen. We'll move into the quest phase. We'll spend one for Dwarven Tomb. To grab... Probably Galadrium's Greeting. Just because it's a nice... Spirit event that we can play. 
Yeah, we'll grab Gladrium's Greeting. We'll spend three to play Gladrium's Greeting. To reduce this by six. One, two, three, four, five, six. I'm really happy with what's happening right now. Uh, we'll quest with Glorfindel. We'll quest with the Handmaiden. We'll quest with Arwen. So that's going to be seven. Show three. So we're going to increase this by four. So this goes up to seven. No, six. Okay. Um, during the next phase, we're going to Gandalf, Will of the West. to shuffle this card, all of this into the deck. And we can breathe. <laughs> Dang. Okay, cool. Sick. And our board state feels really, really solid now. We've got... I guess the only building piece that we're missing is an unexpected courage on Frodo, but I think we're fine without that. We've got... And unexpected courage. Sick. Well, that's going to get discarded. Oops. Oh, well. We don't have to engage the... We don't have to engage the Dead Lord. I think we want to, right? We engage the Dead Lord. We got a Bayful Shade over here. Yeah, we'll engage. He engages. You put the topmost undead enemy into play. We got Bayful Shade. Encounter cards. We will... Clear this encounter card. Or that. Oh, nice. That's a nasty shadow, I think. The minion player discards the top three cards of his deck. Attacking enemy gets plus one. He will attack. We discard unexpected courage. We're going to defend with Gandalf here. Oh, no. Unexpected courage to ready Gandalf. We will defend the four with Frodo, who has four. Discard an attachment you control. We'll toss Blood of Numenor. That actually has not been doing too, too much for us. And we have another one in the deck. No. Um, yeah, nothing else. Gandalf will take out... Uh, Gandalf and Glorfindel will take out the Bayful Shade. We got two, four, six. Which is enough to take out the Dreadlord. All right. Increase our threat. Discard Gladium's Greeting. Stand up. Let's let's uh let's get ready to push. I think we're ready. Draw into Tessa Will. Hemsworth is on the top of our deck. We do not want or need Hemsworth. That's all money. That's what I'm missing. Fallout boy in our head. Let's go. Okay. Stargazer. Hemsworth first. I always do this. Haunted Keep. While it's the active location, the first undead enemy each round gains Surge. Okay, so when this pops, add, add him, reveal one encounter card per player. I don't love that. After he attacks and destroys a character, that character must either discard the top three cards of your deck or return Thandral to the staging area. The player has no cards in his deck. He's eliminated from the game. But we, we stopped discarding cards. So actually, I kind of want to discard Hemsworth before we push. Ooh, Elrond's Council. Nice. And a Snowborn. Oh, I guess we can discard with Thandril's ability. Because Thandril is... After a treachery card with the sorcery trait is revealed from the encounter deck, he heals three and makes an immediate attack against the first player. All right. Top card of the deck. We can go Elrond's Council, I guess. Or Dwarven Tomb. We can play Dwarven Tomb and... 
grab Blood and Numenor. Or actually, we'll grab Unexpected Courage. Nice. Yeah. Sweet. Then we can discard Hemsworth at the end of the round. We'll push next round. We have Snowborns to deal with. Okay. Not bad. Not bad at all. Let's go ahead and Wizard's Pipe. Dang it. No, I keep forgetting that I swap. So, actually, oh, we'll just play Elrond's Council from the top of the deck. We don't have to Wizard's Pipe this. So, one, two, three, and we'll give Arwen plus one. All right. We're going to flip into a three. Arwen's questing for three, so we're fine. We're good. Everyone's happy. Gandalf's staff will give Frodo a resource. Okay. Uh, we'll quest for six. This will go up to nine. We will add Falith here for two. We will not quest. Okay. Oh, then we're going to Wizard's Pipe Dwarven. No, oh, dang it. We're just going to... Oh, we're going to play Dwarven Tomb. That's what we were going to do from the top of the deck in one of these other phases to grab Unexpected Courage. End of the round. We'll discard here. We will raise our threat. We will draw a card. We will unexhaust, and we will pass out money. The other thing that stalling a little bit helps us with is building up more for... Oh, we don't have blood anymore. anymore. Never mind. Just kidding. Does not matter. Okay, let's go Hemsworth. Doom 2. When revealed, each player must either discard one card from the top of their deck for each quest and character he controls, or remove a, each character he controls from the quest. Alrighty, so... Yeah, gross. Um... We have two test of wills. We can test of will that. That's going to be fine. Let's go with Stargazer. We've got Snowborn, Snowborn, Light of Valinor, Gondorian Shield, and Wizard's Pipe. Actually, straight up, we'll just discard three cards for each questing character. That, <laughs> right? Like, we only need to quest for two. We'll discard these three cards because we do not need these three cards. That's really funny, actually. Um, yeah. Sweet. And we'll quest with three characters. So let's go ahead and spend one to play Snowborn Scout, which will clear this. <laughs> That's pretty funny. Um, we'll spend two to play... Unexpected Courage on Frodo. Um, we'll quest for three, five, enough. Doom 2, we raise our threat by two. Each player must either discard one card from the top of the deck for each question character. That's going to be three. One, two, three. And then we push through. The foul sorcery that drives the ghouls against you attacks your mind as well, and you fight to master your fear in the face of an unrelenting enemy. The question of who works the evil spell is answered by the appearance of a dark figure. The old man... You had thought the orc's prisoner has revealed himself to be a powerful wraith. He must be stopped. When revealed, add uh, Thardir to the staging area. Reveal one encounter card per player. Forced, after Thardir attacks and destroys a character, that character controller must either discard the top three cards of her deck or return Thardir to the staging area. One encounter card is the Haunted Keep. Totally fine. Well, as Faleth, the Hunt to Keep. Thardir will engage us. He's going to attack for six. We'll defend with Frodo. 
for four. Each undead enemy engaged with you gets plus one and plus one defense until the end of the round. And so he attacked for seven. We defended for four. We'll raise our threat by three. One, two, three. Unexpected courage will ready Frodo. So he has five. He has five defense. Um, so if we go three, five defense, so 14, three, six, 10, 12, 13, 14 is enough to deal nine damage. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay. Okay. Stand up. Increase our threat. Pass out money. Draw into Snowborn. We've got Galadriums on the top of the deck. Let's see if Hemsworth is going to ruin our day. It is the sorcery. When revealed, each player discards each ally he controls. The same title. We have a test of will, but he will heal three. So we do need to... We do need to save some damage here. Which we have unexpected courages and stuff, so we're actually probably fine. Okay, so we're showing what will what will be zero. So we have to quest for thirteen. So we got three, six. Uh, three, six, eight. 12, 13, or 3, 6, 8, 9, 10, 11, 13. Okay, so we're good. We're good there. We have the damage. Doom 2, we will test a will. So I think we're good. I think we're, uh, I think we're fine. So let's go ahead and... I don't think there's anything... Uh, Shadow cards could mess this up. Actually, it may not be able to mess this up too bad. Yeah, so um, so I don't think we have to mess with anything. I think we actually have lethal here. So Okay. So Northern Tracker will commit and clear. And that's one. Two. Three. Actually, you know what? I don't know if we have the damage. So he's going to have four. We have to do seven. I have one there. Okay, before before we move into the quest phase, we're actually going to just go ahead and stargazer. See if we can get Um, does not help. Actually, uh Elrond's council could kind of help. So Okay, so we'll play Elrond's council. We'll give Northern Tracker plus one. And reduce our threat by three. Oops. Okay. We have to quest for 13. 1, 2, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3. Okay, I don't actually think it matters, but here we are. Cool. This comes in Doom 2. We will spend 1 to test of will the wind revealed effects. Sorcery, so he's going to heal three. We're going to take an attack. 
We'll defend with Frodo. So it's going to be six. No shadow effect. We raise our threat by two. We will stand up. We will attack for three, six, seven. Which does the three damage. Two, four, six. Does the three damage for lethal. Also, this is at 13. Woo! I love this quest. I think this quest is so much fun. It It's so brain burning. It's so interesting. It very much rewards kind of like holding and building, which is my play style. But I... It's, it's so much fun. It's so much fun. But that is the quest. Thanks, Josh. GG's. That is oh, the Dreadful Dyke for the second time. I uh, I forgot to uh, post it, so we're going to download this one and post this one. <laughs> so I posted the uh, the opening of the, the next pack. Story. Yes, that's right. Story. Um, posted the update of the next pack. Thank you. I always forget about the story, so I appreciate it, Josh. Thank you. Um, and then I got a comment. I was like, you never posted the, the Dyke game. I was like, oh. And I was like. I tried to go find it. It was gone. Okay. Do not read until the heroes have won this quest. The rangers were unprepared for an attack, and they were nearly overmastered by the sudden onslaught of Thardur and his ghouls. But the heroes who stood with them rallied the Dunedain to victory with their unyielding courage. Even so, it was a frightful battle. Swords were not the, on were not the enemy's only weapon and the fear of them nearly drove the heroes mad. Yet, as the dawn drew closer, the sorcerer's spells began to fade and the rangers gained the upper hand. However, just as victory seemed assured, Tharadir seized Mr. I and fled into the city. Oh no, the brave ranger who was holding two enemies at bay when the sorcerer struck him over the head with a resounding blow. Then Tharadir ordered two of his minions to retreat with the body. From behind a press of ghastly warriors, the heroes saw... Armathurl give chase, but they were unable to aid him because of the enemies that barred their way. At first, as the first light of the sun broke through the clouds, the heroes struck down the last of their unnatural foes and ran after Armathurl. They found him at a dead man's gate, his eyes glazed in a stupor. He wielded, he still wielded the sword that struck at the air around him, but there were no ghouls left to fight. Armathurl, cried one of the heroes, the dawn has come and the enemy has fled. The Dunedain lowered his sword and regarded the heroes as one waking from a dream. I couldn't reach him, he muttered as he fell to his knees. When I saw them take Mr. I, I tried to follow, but the fog grew thick around me and I lost my way. It was an evil spell that clouded your eyes, said one of the heroes, trying to comfort the young ranger. The, the wraith that attacked us was a powerful sorcerer and it was he that took your friend. Why, said Armathurl, but none could answer. On the ground, the young ranger found the hawk pendant of Mr. Eye and regarded it, it in his hand. It matters not, said the Dunedain, clutching the pendant and rising to his feet. Tharadur has taken my friend, so I will pursue him. We will aid you in this quest, spoke the heroes with one voice. We cannot abandon Mr. Eye to the same fate as those village people. Then let us depart swiftly, said Armathurl. Sheathing his weapon, we may still rescue him if we move quickly. The, uh, we continue the story. Awesome. Uh, I like the story aspect of this. I like the story aspect, but cool. Well, thank you all for, so very much. Josh, really excited to see you play the quest in the cycle. Wolf was one very hard. Is that the next one? Or is that... We got Wolf. This is the Waste of Eridor, so... Wolf, I think maybe this the one after that. Um, prison is easy but also cool. The third quest is my favorite in the whole game. Oh, nice. Fourth can be tough and solo, but great theming. Fifth is the hardest in the game. Oh, geez. <laughs> nice. And the last one isn't far behind the top and has a top two hero. Oh my goodness. I'm so pumped. I'm excited to be playing quests that you know a lot of the community is currently playing with the repackaged content. I think that's really fun. Um Good stuff. Good, good stuff. Awesome. Well, thank you all. Waste is the wolf. Oh, waste is the wolf one. Okay, cool. Well, we got a we got a challenge for us next time. That's fun. Nice. I I love this game. It's so good. It's so good. Sweet. Thank you all so very much for hanging out. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, you know, 
hanging out for two hours and watching Lord of the Rings means a lot to me. So I appreciate y'all. And I will see you next week. We're going to have a little bit of... Well, we'll tease. We'll tease. Uh, we'll have a little bit of a slower stream week next week. I have some vacation. I'm also working on some stuff. And I have found that time is at a premium currently. And so I think we're going to not stream as much next week. But it'll be worth it. So with that, I will leave you. Have a fantastic week. And I'll talk to you later. Peace. Thank you.